Good morning everyone. Today I will share the visco assisted free LM flap technique. The patient in his left eye in January this year presented a good visual acuity with vitro macro attraction. Later on in August, he developed a full thickness macro hole that was operated with combined surgery, cataract, and 25 gauge vitrectomy and limb peeling. It was tamponated with the SF6 is 20%, three days prone position but still uh, the macro hole was open um, and a few months later was operated for refractory full thickness macro hole. The fellow eye, right eye, was operated a few months before and uh, the full thickness macro hole was closed later on with the visual acuity of 0.7. Since 2016, the free LM flap technique is reported in literature to be a valid surgical option in case of refractory or recurrent macro holes in which the ILM peeling had been already performed. The relevant surgical issue is stabilization of the ILM flap on the retinal surface to cover the hole. The flap tends to displace due to the BSS flow present in the vitreous chamber during the fluid air exchange. Several authors previously proposed the surgical technique using the perfluorocarbon liquid. The free LM flap was harvested and transplanted into the macula hole under a PFO bubble. Alternatively, our technique is based on the stabilization of the island flap on a viscoelastic layer that allows the adhesion of the flap during the surgical maneuvers. Furthermore, the flap persists in place in post-op, favoring the glial bridge between the edges of the hole. The viscoelastic then dissolves without impeding the approach of the edges. The viscoelastic uses a cohesive OVD with a molecular weight of approximately 1.5 mL, which is easy also to inject. It's crucial to calibrate the correct amount of OVD injected on the top of the macro hole. At this point, we have the infusion of valve trockers. We are getting uh, the ILM that was already stained and then we are just leaving the ILM free flap on the viscoelastic. So we advise the following surgical steps. Use valve trockers, stain the ILM and wash out the excess of the eye. With infusion of inject OVD Take the ILM with the forceps and uh, lie the ILM on OVD. At this point, open the infusion at 20 mm of mercury and start the fluid air exchange, preferably with the same pressure as the air infusion pressure, so 20 mm of mercury. The flap will stay stable uh, on the retinal plan to cover the macular hole. At the end of the procedures, we leave uh, in SF6 gas mix at 20%. As you can see now, we are switching uh, on air. The air is coming. You can clearly see that the free flap is still there. Then we'll increase uh, the infusion pressure of air a little bit more and then now you see it's dry from the water there's just air and the flap is still there at this point we are uh, injecting gas sf6 20 percent at this point uh, the interfacial tension of uh, air is uh, 70 millinewton meters, so we'll keep uh, the um, free flap uh, in the right position. The critical part was when we were uh, under fluid and during fluid air exchange. 
This is the first day post-op under gas. You can see that uh, the macro is already closed. It is at one week post-op. The best corrective visual acuity is already 0.5. You can see that the flap is still there and the macular hole is closed. The advantages of a technique assisted by OVD instead of by perforate carbon liquid are the following. First, the perforate carbon liquid is injected above the flap, therefore it requires a bimanual technique with chandelier light, whereas in the technique with OVD the flap is simply placed on the top of OVD without the need for further bimanual maneuvers. Second, the perforocarbon liquid must be removed for toxicity induced with the risk of dislocating the flap, whereas the OVD does not need to be removed. Thank you very much for your time and I hope that this can help you.